Alan Cox Show. Hey, how you feeling? You okay? WMMS. Buzzard Radio. Sports break here in a minute. That's how he's going to close out 2022 with whatever he's got available to uh, lay on us in the sports break. And uh, the new Pound Take podcast is available for you on the iHeartRadio app. If you listen to us on the app from out of state, tell me where. That would make you one of our bureau chiefs from around North America. I'd like to know where people are. Evans in Minneapolis. Braley's in Denver. Uh, Brad listens in Fort Mill, South Carolina. Ryan is in San Diego. Andrea listens in Louisville, uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Um, Caitlin's in Pittsburgh. And on and on and on. So thanks. And you can always leave us messages there, too, on the app, if you like. Uh, what up, gang? I, I'm just curious that why do people keep calling you guys to tell you to stop doing things? I mean, I know you don't have the answer to that, but it's just one of those rhetorical questions like, you guys are not going to stop doing what the hell you do. You're going to do the crazy crap and dumb moans and stupid bag and all that. Is that <laughs> just, that's the Alan Cox show. Okay? It's, just take it, guys. Take it. Take it. <laughs> That's going to be the new 2023 uh, tagline. It's the Alan Cox Show. Just take it. I love it. Take it. Take it. Just grease up and grab ankle and don't complain. Now, listen, I like, uh, contrary to what you might think, I like when people tell us what they don't like about the show. I know. I'm opening up a can of worms here. I like when they tell us some things they don't like about the show. Well, listen, a lot of times, you know, and... and, and um. But if you disagree with my moans, my well, you're gonna moan. get you're gonna get <laughs> year end moaning tomorrow. Yeah, because we'll do Terry the Goat's Week 15 picks, and Bill, unless you decide, I mean, I guess you have to do it because it's the end of the year. It's last one. We got to do it. We got to do it. it. Even the people that say they turn off the radio because we're we'll doing the. Moans. I meant in lieu There's of the trying to sell tickets. Oh, we're doing it. We're doing it no matter what. Tickets are selling themselves. I don't need that. Stephanie says, I was catching up with the live stream. It's funny you brought up Father of the Bride. My husband and I watched it last night. It was his first time seeing it. Steve Martin's character is my husband and you, old crotchety men. I'm not an old crotchety guy. <laughs> okay. Remember, they showed Father <laughs> of the Bride at, at school because Kimberly Williams was one of my classmates at Northwestern. And... She was a complete unknown. She's been married to Brad Paisley now for a long, long time. But she was, a, I think we were, actually she might be a year behind me or a year ahead of me. Big, big deal on campus that she had really kind of come out of nowhere and got cast in a Steve Martin movie. It was a big deal. And then that a launched. movie. Yeah, launched her career. Um, and so it was a big deal when they premiered Father of the Bride on campus. It was a packed house. To see Kimberly Williams in this movie. And she was just, man, cute as a button. Just adorable Kimberly Williams. Looks good now. Looked good when she was 20 or 21, however old she was in that movie. Looks good now. Alan, why do people call in? Where did Hate the Show come from? Uh, because, as I recall, it's because when I first came here, they literally hated my guts. And I uh, turned it around and said, hey, thank you so much. And they were traditionally confused by that because the guy I replaced was very popular. And anytime you're the new guy coming in at a radio station, everybody hates you. Guy coming in at a radio station, everybody hates you because you're not the last guy. And that's just what it is. And you got to ride it out. And then it just kind of became shorthand here on the show. So that's the long and the short answer of it. This Friday will be my 13th anniversary here at WMMS. And uh, Oh, congratulations. <laughs> and, uh, you know, who knows what the future holds? Who knows what 2023 holds? Who knows what 2024 holds? Uh, who knows if I'll be here after that? I'm going to hit a decade. In February, the beginning of February, will officially be a ten decade. years on the Alan yeah. Cox Show, which is crazy. My sincerest condolences. It's bananas to think about that, but it's been a it's been a great ten years. 
Do you want to, before I get to the pound cake sports break, do you want to talk to Mary Santorum? Yeah. She always calls yeah. when Mary's gone. It's as yeah. though she's trying to avoid. I know she's called in one or two times when Mary's here, but I always got the the notion that she didn't know Mary was here. It's almost like she's trying to avoid her at all costs. Hello, Mary. Hello, Alan. This is Mary Santora. How are you? Are you preparing uh, feverishly for the holiday season? I'm fine. Thank you for asking. I sure am. I'm so excited it's Christmas, Alan. I love spending time with family and seeing my nieces and nephews. They love playing with their Uncle Mary. <laughs> uh-huh, right. <laughs> I just wanted to call and wish you a very Merry Christmas and tell Bill that I'll be seeing him on Friday at the Agora, big boy. Oh, yeah. That's exciting. Well, I'm excited. Will you call? Maybe there will, will be a surprise. I was going to say, <laughs> oh, I bet there's a surprise, all right, <laughs> under that skirt. Um, do you think that you'll call Mary Santorum up to maybe do a tight five? Uh, I don't think all the bombers are coming in. I know she oh. likes to perform with her comedic uh, troop. troop the yeah. bombers. Well, there is safety in numbers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alan, 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 as you know, and you just mentioned, I do a lot of stand up with my comedic troupe, the Bombers, yep. okay? But I wrote a quick Christmas jingle for the Alan Cox show. Would you like an example? Oh, I love it. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, great. It goes like this. The Alan Cox Show is the gayest show around. Spreading comedy and cheer all through the year. They pick you up when you are down. Cody, Bill, and Mary are as funny as can be. Mary's on the road, Bill's doing live shows and pound cakes on his knees. There must be some magic in those iHeart microphones. What's coming out the other end warms me to my bone. The Alan Cox Show is the gayest show in town. So sit right back and smoke a fag. It's Christmas time <laughs> right now. <laughs> Jesus. I'll tell you what. Well, maybe he's calling us from across. She's calling us from across the yeah, pond, yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> co-written with British Allen, perhaps. Uh, well, there you go. Uh, not a dry eye in the house, Mary Santorum. And what a holiday treat to be... Uh, I've been called a lot of things. Uh, the gayest show in town is the uh, list. I'll lay that completely at Pound Cake's feet, and I think he should wear that as a badge of honor. Just don't worry. Well, thank, thank you very much, Alan, for taking my call and letting me perform my craft and yeah. have a great holiday season, and I'll be talking to you next year. All right. Thank you. There's Mary Santorum, who checks in sometimes when Mary Santora is not around. It's good to be Bill Squire. It always feels right when he's in the spotlight. Now, it's really, uh, you can't really tell, but Mary Santorum has an eight-octave range. Uh, so she really, really shines when she calls in here. Alan, you can star in the Son of the Bride movie for that hot cougar mom of yours. Sh you son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> you shut your whore mouth! <sighs> can I see a picture of your mom? I've never seen her. No. I can show you a picture of my mom. Yeah, I'll show you a picture of my mom. Okay. Alan, this coming August will be my 10-year Alan Cox Show listening anniversary. Exciting. Hey. Congratulations. Hey. That's the hardest part Man, of all. It really that's is. One, you should be really applauded. Impressive. You should be applauded. It's one thing to be here. We're paid to be here. We can't leave. <laughs> yeah. I can't turn this off. Even when I'm home. I tell Gwen that all the time. I go, baby, I can't turn it off. Come on. Pound cake, are you ready? Uh, do you need a moment to uh, collect your feels? Mm -hmm. Will you be able to maintain your composure doing the last pound cake sports break of the year? I might get a little emotional for sure. Well, I'll give you a little bit of rope here. So just take okay. your time. If you need uh, me to stop down so that you can grab a hanky or anything else, you let me know. Okay. Are you feeling pressure? No, I'm just okay, emotional. You're just emotional about it. This, so is, you, it's, this is the first full year, I think, of doing the Pound Cake Sports Break. Hmm. Well, then there's multiple reasons for like celebration. It, 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 to me, it seems like it's been going on forever. 
Is that a compliment? <laughs> <laughs> Did it sound like a compliment? <laughs> If somebody tells you, God, this thing is taking forever, do they mean that in a good way? No. Oh, boy. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Play ball! This is a pound cake sports break! In the headlines today, man, oh, man, there's nothing like hockey fans. You guys want to emulate the sport so bad. There was a huge brawl at the Coyotes versus Bruins game last Friday at Mullet Arena. Hmm, why am I not surprised? No one knows why the fight broke out, but according to authorities, one fan got the tip of their finger bitten off. The melee included about a dozen men and women, and most of them shown on video have since been arrested. Neither team has made a statement about the fight, nor do I think they need to. The game was a double feature, having both hockey and the scene from Lion King when Mufasa got killed. Also, let's have... Let's have a feel-good story. I mean, it is the holidays after all. Retired NFL player Rob Gronkowski surprised an Army vet who has, who's a Purple Heart recipient with a brand new truck. Gronk is partnering with USAA to give away new rides to deserving veterans. The heartfelt video was posted to Gronk's Twitter, and it's definitely not safe for work unless you want to cry at your desk. To me, this is better than the publisher's clearinghouse. I totally want some Gronk in my trunk, if you know what I mean. And then lastly... I couldn't do the last Pound Cake Sports break of 2022 without talking about a reporter getting slick of the lips and saying something racist live on air. Robert Griffin III had to clarify a slur he made after praising Philadelphia's quarterback, Philadelphia's quarterback Jalen Hurts' big win against the Giants. He meant to say Jalen proved those bugaboos wrong, not the racist J word. Robert immediately went to social media and issued an apology to the white people who were offended. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes this Pound Cake Sports Break. <laughs> Happy holidays, everyone. Play ball! This is a Pound Cake Sports Break! That's called pulling a Christy Capel. I didn't want to bring her into this. I really liked her a lot. <laughs> I was like, ooh, this is a flashback. I was like, nope. Not Apologize even. to the white people who were offended. Yeah, because black people, he was talking about the team uh, and saying they weren't giving him his props, and he called them, am I allowed to say that word? Jigaboo? Yeah, he was calling them jigaboos. I mean, if that's a uh, quote, that's what he said. Yeah, but the black people didn't make him apologize. It was the white people that made him apologize. I can't believe he said that. But huh. he was talking to his people. Alan, I will apologize. I was in a meeting, but did Pound Cake hit his goal weight? Well, we're going to find that out tomorrow. You didn't miss anything. That's this tomorrow. is tomorrow. When we do that, four fifty usually. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I, don't the, I don't want the suspense to kill him. You want to do it at four fifty tomorrow, pound cake? Or do you want to wait and do it the very last segment? Hell no, I don't want to sit around. No, and I wait. want to get it in the meat of the show. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think four fifty is good. Four fifty is fine. All right, I'll put you down for four fifty. That's when we usually do it, right? It's around there between. Yeah, like I'll four, either put it in the four twenty or the four fifty segment. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we'll know for sure that it'll be his last weigh-in. I might pass Hopefully out. hitting his uh, goal weight of 172 pounds. It's going to be like the longest two seconds of when it like calculates and it like goes and then it says the number finally. I'm like, I don't know. I might pass out. Do you even have $500 that you could give Mary if you were going to pay her, which we all know you're not? Do I even have $500 right at this point right now? Yeah. Um, I do, but I'm not giving it to Mary. I'm, I, <laughs> I'm, I got, it's going to drain him is what he's saying. I know I got, he only has $500. I got Christmas shopping to do. I haven't even so how Christmas soon, shopping. if you don't, if things go sideways for you and you don't make your goal weight, how soon will you be able to pay her the $500 you'll owe her? When I, I think he's going to be over. When I see her. When you see her. <laughs> no, oh, and, so on January, because when we the first day back, January 3rd, I'm going to weigh pound cake again. <laughs> just for my own edification. Just because I will be curious to see what happened. I don't think it's going to be a, a Listen, I don't think I'm it's going to be a I'm nightmare. I'm going to come back here and weigh him after we go. <laughs> go over to Shake Shack? After we go to Shake Shack, we'll weigh, he'll do a weigh-in after Oh, that. God. <laughs> Double cheeseburger, yeah. gravy fries, whatever they have over there. Poutine. I don't know what they have. I got a letter from Mike. I'm always impressed with how Pound Cake is able to pull the most obscure and random names out of his ass 
when telling stories. And for some reason, I felt compelled to jot them down over the course of 2022. This is, this is somebody feat. who took copious notes throughout that. the course oh of the year. God. I don't listen to every minute of the show, but certainly enough to assemble the laundry list below. And he sent me a list of the names that you have butchered. come up with. No, that you've made up. Oh, okay. Not names you've butchered. I thought these were butchered. real people and I, and I like pronounced them wrong. No, no, no. He's like, I'm impressed with the, how he's able to pull obscure names out of his hat. I guess he, when you're like, uh, well, here they are. Vivian. Mm-hmm. When you're like, shut up, Vivian. You know, you'll just come up with a name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he jot a bunch down. Milton, <laughs> Tom, <laughs> Bethany, <laughs> Bartholomew, <laughs> Jonathan, Norris, Eugene, Jacob, Davis, Chaz, Chancellor. Remember calling someone Chancellor? I don't remember. I don't even remember Milton, so continue. Leonard, Bob, Jim, Day Day. And then he puts your guesses as good as mine on that. <laughs> that kid probably came from Get over here, Day Day. <laughs> April. And Jim is in here a few times. Rob, Thelma, and Louise. Tim, Sharice. Nadine. John. Uh, Courtney. And Donald with Jobs Are Us. There you go. And my new boyfriend of 2023 is Alex Yurick. Yeah. Who is that? My new boyfriend. Oh, your new boyfriend. P.S. What's that bitchin' track you play during Perez Bilton's Hot Goss? Oh, yeah, I play the, there's an old 70s, uh, it sounds porno-y. Yeah. But it's a, there was an old, I think, late 70s, early 80s game show called Chain Reaction. And this is the theme song to Chain Reaction. And I love it so much that I use it for Perez Bilton's, and there's a Pavlovian response, by the way. Bill's probably dancing around as I play this. I am. I got myself on camera because I can't <laughs> not. You get those toes a tapping when the chain reaction music comes in, and rightfully so. That's good stuff. Okay, I got to take a.